Okay, so here I am painting the man Desmond Tutu, working between different references of him, not being afraid of color, uh, trying to have fun with it. But I also had this idea of him stuffed silly with socks. So this is how I'm gonna stylize it. Cause this is a pretty straightforward, just kind of digital speed painting with a lot of color, you know? So now, I'm going to go towards more refinement. So I'm going to lock this layer, move to a new layer, and I'm going to say um, stuffed with socks. <laughs> and so there's lots of ways. Once you have to kind of slow down your speed painting, there's lots of ways to think about how to proceed. Some artists at this point, if they're portrait painters, especially contemporary portrait painters, they might take sandpaper to the painting and really like scrub out certain areas that they feel are too heavy handed. Others might uh, pour turpentine on it and let it dissolve or bleach. Others might spray it with water and let that soften everything if it's a water soluble material. So basically, that's a method I like. You, you get to a point where you're kind of slowing down and you're not sure, you're trying to be a little too careful, and that's no fun anymore. So you have to find a way to mess it up. Got to be willing to mess with it. So I'm going to do that with compositing. That's why I have that kind of stuffed silly with socks idea. So I've got different socks here. And what I thought I would do is just take chunks of them like this, these crazy stuffed socks, right? Copy them over, paste them on top. Stretch them out. And use them as compositing elements, right? Now, I've really stretched them out, and I'm going to erase the, the white negative spaces, right? And probably erase these grays. And probably erase, like, the edges. So going back to our compositing skills, select and match, and feather it a little bit so it bites in, just to remind you. So these little edges then get deleted completely. So now I've just got this weird kind of texture. <laughs> and I want to build it around him. Like it's a garland and a halo and he's just kind of floating in socks. And of course I can warp it. <coughs> stretch it out to kind of fill the space, kind of like we did with our um, cloud creature. But I also have to have it be recognizable still as Desmond Tutu, right? Also, you see how the socks, they look really blurry and soft because they're photo pixels versus my painting, right? Which looks more like a straightforward sponge painting. So this is where we get to just have some fun digitally. I might do some internal compositing, like take a chunk of it here, duplicate that, Command J, flip it. Put it over into this shoulder, warp it, rotate it. And then I can paint over it, right? Move it down. So let's see. Let's merge those together. So if I merge that down through the layers, right, like that's pretty funny. That's less interesting. So this gives me something new to react to. All these socks. And now those socks are kind of in between my paint layers.
And that gives me something to work with, something to react to and change and mess with. But maybe I can work with those socks a little bit more. So how can I make them more look more like paint? Right? Well, I can play with their color balance. You know, I can adjust them, but I like their intensity. I can sharpen them. So start using some filters. And this is all, I want wanted to introduce you to this because this is all more experimental and more exploratory. Just in time for your final projects. And basically, you do whatever you, you need to do to make it something you're interested in. Right? Sometimes I'll even take some, some texture or some photo reference, go into Illustrator, live trace it, then bring it back as an EPS into the digital painting just so it, it makes something soft edge into something hard edge. And I truly have no idea what this will become. Right? Then you can use, so the thing that I'm less uh, sure about using at this point, because I still want to do more painting, I just want to start incorporating the sock element into it. So you see how that's sharpened it a lot. <laughs> And that looks a lot more like the digital painting, but maybe I sharpened it too much, right? So if I go back before I did that and then go to sharpen, I can take those settings down a little bit because it can be a pretty powerful tool. But it does help. But this is, this is my equivalent of sanding it down or taking a, turpentine to it or splattering you know paint over the top of it to give you something to react to so it doesn't feel so much just like a straightforward exercise now especially if this is your first time digital painting it is just a straightforward exercise <laughs> and you're just getting used to what's possible okay so now that they've been sharpened like that maybe I then go and I blur them a little bit. Just a little. And you see how now that photo reference starts to look a lot more like, like digital paint. Right. Now where it's showing through, that's where I might not have enough under my different layers, right? And so I can make a duplicate of the socks, move them up above, and maybe try a blending mode. And that does some fun things to certain parts. Or only using the lighter color, or overlaying it, soft lighting it. Let's see, pin light. That's fun. all kinds of different approaches. So I think pin light was the one I like best, right? And it gives me these like little scribbles and things to work with. And then here's a, a nice technique. So if you like how that looks, I can turn it all off. Because I like that kind of brightness to it, right? And then I can simply say, because pin light's different than if it was normal, right? And then I can say, um, right click, I can duplicate it, Command J, then take both of them and merge them together, Command E. Oh, let's do that with a white, sorry. So if I set it to pin light, This is a way to rasterize the layer style and then fill pure light white behind it because my other white layer is um, already locked, right? And then merge these two together, Command E. Now at normal mode, it looks like what it looked like at pin light. Now, why is that helpful? Well, because now if I set it at pin light, 
that will be kind of halfway between the two over the top and get rid of the whites. Right. And then I can take its opacity way down. I can even try it on normal mode just with its opacity way down. Right. And then I can move it down underneath the layers a little bit. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Put the base painting back in there. Take the opacity down on this. And now start painting over. So this is my stuffed with socks layer. I'm going to lock everything else. And now I have to kind of paint things in and paint things out. And maybe even occasionally paint things underneath. So we're going to see. Or just repaint. But because I have all my layers, I don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to save, and I'm compositing in kind of other textures and other fun things. So now with my brush, I am going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to go to a higher opacity again, because this is almost like a base painting again. In fact, I might even go to 100% opacity to begin with, and I might start painting with white, because where the socks are uh, hard edged and cut out here I don't want, right? And so instead of erasing them, I'm just painting white at the edges, kind of cutting them in. And then at the bottom here, I want it to feel sock-like. And it might just be because I've worked as an illustrator for a long time, but I always think in terms of spot illustrations. Why arbitrarily make something cut off if you can make it feel more intentional to the shape? So I try to find the intention shape that would make the most sense. And would look good as a sticker or on a t-shirt. Will look good on a sticker or a t-shirt, it's also going to work well for a children's book, which is kind of what this is for. So the working idea, these absurd things. All right, now I start painting. And I'm painting at 100% opacity. Just enough to scrub in these socks. Where I think they need it. I gotta get his hat back in there. And these socks give me a lot of great shadow tones to work with. And then I can switch to a lower opacity pretty quickly. Once I think I've got them defined. But the goal is to, to claim your territory, like knock back that, that white. So I'm going to do something a little crazy. I'm going to hold down Option, turn off the blank white background, and I'm going to say Layer Merge Visible. So everything's combined on this one layer so that I can steal from it and steal maybe the socks here. Do some internal compositing again. Command J that. Turn that off. Turn everything back on. So, And then bring that into, let's see, where do I want it? Top of his ear maybe. I just want it to be joyful and silly and strange. <laughs> so something like that. 